Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Freddie. I know it's been a long time since I posted a video on YouTube. It's just been really busy. Um, but I already got the, the camera set up and, um, and my laptop here. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone for this video, meaning this is going to be not just a YouTube video, but I'll probably post this up on my audio podcast, which is called Fredcast. And it's available on um, SoundCloud and Spotify and iTunes and Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts, it should be available. And if you just want to watch the the YouTube, you can watch it here. Uh, but like I said, this is going to be an audio and video um, kind of post. I released an album called Beyond the Sea of Trees with Jakarta Records earlier this year in May of 2019. And um, it's available now on everywhere you stream music, as well as uh, through Bandcamp and um, iTunes, you know, wherever. And uh, we also came out with a vinyl, which is this, uh, Beyond the Sea of Trees with me on the cover. I think this is maybe one of the only album covers with me on on it. Maybe my very first, al my very first album I had my face on it, but this one is kind of uh, it's been like ten, over 10 years since I actually put my face on the album. And this shot was uh, shot by my man Kit. We, we took this from a video uh, screenshot and then I just found the, uh, the forest <laughs> from, a, for some, from some images. But anyway, this is like a double LP. It's still available. I believe it's available at, at a lot of uh, record stores now. Not just HHV, not just, um, what's the other one in Germany? HHV and I forgot, <laughs> but it's available. I think it's still available through Fat Beats and uh, Turntable Lab and a few uh, local record stores, wherever you can kind of find it. And it's available through uh, the Jakarta Bandcamp, so you can pick it up beyond the sea of trees. But we're going to go ahead and talk about one of the tracks from it called Be self-titled Beyond the Sea of Trees. And it features a, a, a fellow producer and musician named Flo Fills. He's originally from Aachen, Germany. And he helped me out uh, playing um, some of the violin on here, as well as some of the drums he helped me out. So that's the track that we're gonna talk about on this episode. Uh, let's go ahead and just kind of listen to parts of it. And then I'll just kind of break down what's going on. Uh, if you can see visually, if you're watching the video, um, there's, a, there's a few things going on here. A lot of MIDI and audio kind of information going on. Uh, let's go ahead and just kind of listen to it. So that's the sample. Here's the sample which with effects on it. Um, and then from here, I believe I just worked on drums myself before I actually got the drums from Flow Fills. So here are the drums with the sample. Initially, it was this. So this is kind of like the loop that I initially worked on, along with like some roads you can hear on it. And I was just kind of like looping this up for a, for a while, just kind of freestyling on it. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm trying to, I reached out to Flo Fills and I was like, yo, I'm putting this album together. I would really like you on it. I'm kind of working on a couple things. I think I sent him like maybe one or two beats. And I was like, do you think you can kind of work this one out? So he sent me these drums, basically, which is this.
I think I just took certain sections of this. Hold on, let me see if I can just play these drums out real quick, right quick. Maybe, maybe I should just post, paste it here. So you can kind of hear the whole drums here. So uh, I basically just like t took out the snare on the drums and then you have this. And if you layer that on top of all the other drums, And then uh, I, I basically just uh, played some guitar over this stuff. And then I basically just worked on the track a little bit longer. And I was like, okay, here's kind of like the track a little bit laid out. And then I sent it to Flow Fills and I was like, you know, dude, I think you should um, play the violin over this. It would sound dope. So, so I originally already had some violin over this, um, some really simple stuff. Um, and then he came in and he basically just recorded like all this other violin stuff happening. So this is all flow fills right here. So this is like uh, the strings that I initially recorded, just using a keyboard. And then we just layered the, his real live strings on top of it. So this part coming up is actually a breakdown of the whole track. And then uh, basically for that breakdown, I just programmed some new drums and really like emphasize the spaciness like with some reverb. And then uh, this was the bass line, which is a kind of like a Juno um, VST. And I guess a good trick you can do, um, even though I didn't do it in this particular beat, is like sometimes when I'm using VSTs, I, uh, especially something like sounding like this, a little bit like Mogi, a little bit like uh, Jupiter kind of ish, you know, sometimes it lacks some of the bottom end. So what you can do is if it's MIDI information, you can play out 
how you would the baseline, even though it's lacking some of that bottom end, like, umph, if that makes any sense, like the punch of the bottom end or like that low end frequency. And then you take the same MIDI information and then basically duplicate it and then add another bass sound, like a bass VS VST or whatever it is, that's more like subby, and then just kind of layer those two on top of each other. So th that's only if the bass that you're working with is lacking some of the uh, that bottom end. So you can just layer two bass sounds on top of each other. Or if even vice versa, if you have something that's really like low end, that's kind of more subby kind of bass, and you kind of want a little bit more, I guess, uh, like kind of like a mid, mid to high range kind of like sound, like a little bit of the crispiness. Um, you can layer like some like a, another synth on top of it, playing the same exact like notes. Uh, even though I didn't do it on this one. <laughs> See like this, I basically I EQ'd some of the uh, the bass parts because I didn't want some of those those like high end or mid range kind of like. Uh, frequencies coming through uh, and then for this it, it comes back so right here that's the the normal bass and then this is kind of like the filtered bass here so you can kind of change it up a little bit uh, using that method but yeah and I think that's pretty much it I mean for the most part <laughs> for the most part that's pretty much it um, but yeah, maybe we can talk about another track on here. Um, you can stream this song. I think it's on my SoundCloud, my SoundCloud and Bandcamp and iTunes and Spotify. The whole album is definitely available like Apple Music and Spotify and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, let's talk about another one. Um, this uh, one was a collaboration between me and uh, like a musician named Elijah Fox. He plays the keys. Um, he initially sent me a sample pack. Well, actually, initially I found him on Instagram. You know, I, I go on Instagram and I check out a bunch of artists, um, especially musicians. There's so many talented musicians out there. Um, but anyway, I... Um, I came across Elijah Fox just playing the keys on like a post. And then I'll, I usually on Instagram, what I'll do is I'll come across a post. And if it's something I really like, I'll save it. You know, like you can save like collections. So I have like a collection of just like music artists just playing keys or like guitar and drums and stuff like that. But I came across Elijah and uh, I saved a few of his posts. And then, you know, like usually when I find like a, uh, like a musician on Instagram that I really like, I'll just go through their timeline, just like a stalker, just like a music musician stalker, just go through their timeline and I'll seriously watch almost all their posts um, if I really like them. And then I, I remember seeing on one of his posts that he was working on a sample pack. So I actually reached out to him and I was like, hey man, you know, like I really dig the stuff you're doing. I, don't, I forgot what the email said. But <laughs> I really dig what you're doing. Uh, I saw that you have a sample pack for sale. Do, uh, do you think you can send it to me? And, and I basically paid for the sample pack. So he sent it to me. And uh, there was actually a lot of sounds I like on it. Usually when I buy sample packs, um, which I do, I've been doing a lot lately, is um, 
I look for a lot of like piano sounds and guitar and drum sounds. Those like those are like the main three things that I really try to like go after. I know there's a lot of sample packs out there that are just like it's not a lot of sounds you can I could well me personally there's not a lot of sounds I could really use. Um, I feel it's like a bunch of weird stuff and you have to really manipulate it to get something that you really like. Uh, but like with stuff like what Elijah Fox is doing and a handful of other like musicians put sample packs together. Um, it's stuff that I could either take as is because there's a lot of like cool loops on there that are just incredible or I can chop it up and like kind of make my own thing on it. Um, this one is just basically a loop initially and then I just built everything around the loop. And then I even, I reached out to Elijah, I was like, hey, I'm putting this album together. Would you be down to be on this album? You know, like you know, I'm, I use one of your samples for one of the tracks. It'd be dope if you could play like keys or a synth over on top of this. So that's basically what he did. He, he sent me a few takes and then uh, I just basically kind of cut and pasted like what usually when, when artists are working on my tracks, I have them just kind of record like one takes and just send me the whole thing. And then I'll take bits and pieces from all those takes and kind of edit them where I would like them in the song or where it makes more sense in the song. Uh, and that's basically what I did with this. So let's listen to the sample first. I believe this is the sample. Let's see if we can just expand everything here. Can't even see anything here. Okay, so here's the sample and I just basically took this and I just looped it. Sometimes I don't like to chop samples. Sometimes when I'm listening to samples, I really enjoy how they just initially sound. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'll chop them, but like for this instance, I just basically like this. And I think uh, when I initially made this beat, I made it on the MPC Live, but then I wanted to tweak the drums a little bit more. So I imported everything that I worked on on the MPC and I just bas basically just recreated it in Ableton. Uh, because there's some there's some things on the MPC Live that I can't do drum wise than I can do in Ableton. So that's basically what I did here. Uh, here are the drums. And it's just a lot of layering stuff. This is the bass. I just play the guitar and what I did is usually this is I do this a lot where I'll play the guitar in its natural kind of tone and then I'll kind of duplicate that sample or play it again and then I'll pitch it up either like a full octave or pitch it down a full octave so you can kind of layer those two together um, and then f that's what you're kind of hearing here you just have different pitches of guitar so So this is like the what you what I played initially. And then this is it like pitched up like a full octave. Whoops. Sorry. And then uh, this is the same sample, uh, the piano sample, but run through a bunch of effects uh, and then pitched up a full octave as well. So that that's like one tip you are that maybe you can use is just like taking the same sound and just pitching it up like a full octave or pitching it down a full octave and just kind of layering the layering the two, those two sounds together or even three sounds like one a full octave high one at zero and one a full octave low and just just layering those three kind of um uh, uh 
sounds all together. Not, that, not just like samples, you can do that with like, you know, bass lines and drums and whatever. The same sound is just pitched at different octaves. And then basically I sent that to him. I, I sent what you just heard to him sans all this stuff. Um, so basically I sent him <laughs> pretty much all of this. I sent him all that and then he basically, I told him to just like go crazy on the keys if he could. <laughs> um, hold on. So that's what he did with this. It was a few takes that I, uh, that I use. Some of the stuff I didn't use actually. Um, there's some stuff on here that, that he just kind of went on the keys and I was like, uh, I don't know if like I could really use that with, along with this. So I was like, do you think you can record the, um, like a synth instead of the keys? So that's what this is basically. And I just basically cut and paste a bunch of, uh, parts of the the keys and stuff like that. Um yeah. And then for the outro, I took um some of the piano that he sent me and I kind of blended the the beat, the end of the beat into this piano version. So, or this piano kind of him playing. So let's go ahead and listen to that transition. So it kind of like, it's a, it's a pretty smooth transition from the actual beat into this like piano outro that kind of, uh, you know, everything drops and you just hear the piano and it just sounds more uh, like dreamier, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the most part. Um, and that track is called Winding Road, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's called The Winding Road, and that features Elijah Fox on the keys, not just playing the actual piano, but playing some of the synth parts. And then, uh, yeah, it's available everywhere, just like the rest of the album. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this last track, and then, um, and then we'll just kind of wrap it up in a sense. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this track is called Backyards, and it features my friend and vocalist, Natalie Oliveri. Um, we've been working for the past, like, I don't know, a few years now, uh, just on small things. And then I asked her to be on this album, of course. We actually worked on two songs, this one and one that actually I cut from the album. So maybe I'll put that up on SoundCloud, the one that really didn't make the cut. Um, I didn't... <laughs> It, I feel like the other song was, it, it's, it was definitely more of a chill song. It's, it's cool, but um, I just didn't want it on the album because I was, at that same time, I was um, kind of messing around with the album, uh, um, the track listing and, you know, like I, I, I must have had like, 
I don't know, like maybe 30 tracks to select from. And I was kind of um, cutting out a bunch of fat, you know, in a sense. Um, and I kind of wanted to, to kind of break it down to like the best kind of tracks or the ones I really liked. So I cut like half of the album, basically. Cut half of the album out. And then it's these are the 16 tracks that you get for the album. Uh, but this one is called Backyards. This features Natalie Oliveri. She's playing, or she's singing um, just simple parts of the hook, and then I just kind of let her do her thing at the end. Um, this album, since it's more in tune of like an instrumental album, I didn't want us to work on like a full, complete song where she's like singing verses and hooks and stuff like that. So most of the stuff that I asked her to do was just kind of like ad libbing things here and there kind of gave her some general ideas of how I wanted things to be sung. Um, but yeah, I just didn't want full on songs. I feel like if we were to work on full on songs, me and Natalie, I would want that to go towards her kind of projects rather than mine <laughs> in a way. Um, and me just kind of handling the production as well as like some of the editing. So that's enough talking. Let's uh, go ahead and listen to this. So the sample itself is just basically kind of like a loop that I kind of chopped up and kind of compressed together in a way. Um, sometimes when I when I work with samples, I'm not just chopping it up and then playing it out on pads or anything like that. Sometimes I'm just looking at the computer screen and just kind of finally finally placing samples where I want them, uh, and that's what I did for this one. And then it kind of the filter kind of comes in around certain sections. I don't know if I talked about this track on this YouTube channel already. I might have already. Maybe I'll just kind of go into more detail. And the drums are basically just a drum loop that I just added like a few other elements to it. And then I added some trumpet samples. So basically I just I took a trumpet sample and I cut it up and I just was playing stuff on the pads, just tuned it to the song and then I just played it on the pads. And then I, uh, let's see what all this other stuff is. Then I added some flutes on the keys. And then this is a, like a vibe synth, vibraphone synth. And then this is the bass line. Sometimes when I'm creating a bass line, um, sometimes I'll just kind of create my own thing uh, and it works out. Um, but with something like this, I, what I was trying to do is I, I took the sample and it already had like an underlying bass line, like an upright bass sound. And I basically really liked that bass line and I just wanted to kind of um, like mimic it. So what I'll do is I'll take the sample and I'll just like low pass filter it so it only isolates the low end. And I'll, I'll just listen to the bass sound and then i'll just try to mimic it using another bass sound like on the keys or something like that or like you know like a bass vst or something and then um i'll just kind of play 
the same bass line that the sample is playing, but then I just kind of re try to recreate it basically uh, with a maybe more punchier bass because sometimes uh, with jazz records and stuff like that, you can't really, the bass doesn't sh come out really well. Uh, you have to do like a lot of EQing and kind of like, you know, uh, processing and stuff like that to make it so sh shine out. Um, but still, you can kind of still get some of the bleed through, especially if you're, um, say you're sampling some, something with drums, uh, like say it's like piano, drums, and a bass, but you really like the bass sound, but you don't want to um, bring in like those drums. Like say you're trying to filter the bass sound out, but the drums are still coming through. So you'll still get the, the hit of the, or the hit of the kick and maybe some of the snare. And it's just kind of hard to, to filter a bass from that way. So what I'll do is I'll kind of just replay the bass uh, just so I can isolate just the bass sound rather than having the bass and like a kick, you know, a kick sound from just filtering. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. Like it's easier to EQ, like say piano out of like the mid to high range than it is to to filter just the bass um, with the low range along with drums. I don't I don't know if I'm making any sense. It's hard for me to explain things, but I hope that makes sense. Okay, and then here's Natalie's um, uh, vocal stuff. And then she just sang some more on top of it. Yeah, um, that's pretty much it, uh, yeah. That's called Backyards featuring Natalie Oliveri. Um, this song, I wanted to be kind of reminiscent of, you know, like the stuff that I grew up listening to, that kind of like somewhat boom bap -ish kind of hip hop, but like more, I guess, with my own flavor. Um, but this is kind of like a, a kid song in a way, I feel. Like that's why I named it Backyards. It's, it's about like playing in the backyard all summer kind of thing. Um, Beyond the Sea of Trees, the one, the first beat that we went over was, uh, it's it more of like a serious thing. It's more kind of like a, a, if I can kind of try to explain it, it's like being lost in the forest kind of thing. It's a little bit more serious. Um, and then Winding Road uh, with uh, Elijah Fox, that one is more like kind of like, the the sound is more reminiscent of like, dreaming and kind of going down like a weird path in your dreams that's kind of how i would interpret it i know it's really hippie-ish but um that's that's what i i wanted to do for this album it's really more of like like a storyteller's kind of album i would say even though it's instrumental it's up for interpretation but uh this 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 album i feel is more like a reflection of the serious side of my life in a way or like the dreamier parts of my life and that's kind of what the whole album is about. Um, but yeah, that was the track with Natalie. Um, 
and then we went over the track with Elijah Fox and the track with Flow Fills. And yeah, I guess that's it, really. Um, uh, I'm coming out with some more videos. I'm doing some stuff with a few other companies. Uh, I don't want to give too much away. I am um, going to be shooting a video with Ableton. Uh, so hopefully that will be coming out, um, hopefully by the end of this year. If not, then next year. Um, but yeah, that should be cool. I, I've been working on like something really cool for that video um, that I really like. Um, but I haven't really been like uh, producing my own stuff as of late. I've been working on a few remixes for people and um, still doing like a sound design for like sample packs, working with a few companies for that, you know, licensing music, of course. And, um, but I haven't really sat down and really worked on my own personal stuff. Uh, but this, this video that I'm shooting with Ableton should be pretty cool because, um, it's a track that I was able to work on just on my own. And it's something that I, that, that I really like and want to present to everybody. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I guess this would be like the the podcast portion of this video. I don't. I know there's like a bunch of podcasts out there. I listen to a grip. Um, but yeah, uh, I just want to. I I know if you already follow my podcast, Fred Cast, you know I go over a lot of stuff, my personal life and uh, what's going on with me, like musically. Well, um, but. Um, I forgot in the past couple episodes of the Fredcast to kind of do some honorable mentions of some producers and music artists and people involved in the music industry that have passed away. The big one was, I, I believe, Ross G. Um, you know, he's a, a dope producer and he's really infamous for using like the MPC and especially the SP404. Uh, just kind of in his own lane, I feel, um, when making music, a lot of just sampling, like, records and stuff like that, uh, just passed away, I don't know, maybe like two or three weeks ago, so that's always sad for the music community, especially, you know, like, it's always really sad when you, when, um, when hum humbling kind of producers or music artists in general, um, kind of, uh, are gone before, before their time. And, uh, also Patton Locke, or Patton Locke from the Smile Rays, he passed away a couple weeks ago. Um, he had a, he had, uh, he was battling cancer for a while and, um, unfortunately, he, um, he passed away. Uh, my, one of my favorite tracks, um, from uh, the group, the Smile Rays, was a toast and just such a dope song but Pat Lockie was a he was a rapper and I believe he produced some music as well um, but he was part of a group called the Smile Rays and um, I I think I worked on a remix for them a long time ago but yeah it's always sad to see like uh, in especially independent music artists kind of pass before they can uh, um, or, you know, it's always just sad to see people passing, especially from like um, health issues, uh, whether it's cancer or, you know, like something else. Uh, but yeah, just those two guys unfortunately passed away. Um, other than that, other than, you know, the stuff that I just presented and, uh, you know, like the stuff that I've been kind of secretly working on not secretly just not you know i haven't had time to post anything usually if you follow me on social media it's you're gonna find a bunch of like uh instagram posts and stuff like that of me making beats but i just haven't had time to really like show everybody what i'm doing uh for the most part i've been working on in ableton for the uh the majority of my stuff as of lately i haven't really turned on my mpc in a while or even touch my modular stuff. It's only because my workload for, you know, maybe for other artists and other clients has to be revolved around the computer. So I can't really um, make too much music on my MPC or 
or just you know hardware stuff in general as of lately i have to kind of stick to the computer um and yeah i you know that's pretty much it you know like it's been kind of like a busy couple of uh months these past few months um kind of learning new things and uh, having a lot of meetings and stuff like that but i won't bore you guys with that that stuff uh where are we at time wise though maybe i can just kind of uh make this a little bit shorter but thanks again for everybody who has actually purchased the album beyond the sea of trees it is available you'll get my lovely face on the cover um 16 tracks featuring Flo Phil's, Elijah Fox, and Natalie Oliveri, um, and me doing most all the all of the production. I guess it's an instrumental album, um, kind of like a self-reflective kind of album for me. Um, and this is one of the first albums that I actually worked on the artwork myself, other than the photo um, that was taken by my man Kit. Um, I worked on the 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 layout of the album uh myself which was cool i know it has kind of like this generic font <laughs> but you know i wanted it to tie in with uh um my fred cast stuff as well as uh uh just kind of look a little bit more clean and streamlined but yeah usually uh question he usually handles most of my artwork but uh for this one since i didn't actually didn't go with mellow orange for this one i wanted to uh do everything myself and i feel like since this album is a little bit more personal for me. I wanted to kind of do everything myself. Um, uh, and, you know, like since I didn't release it with Mellow Orange, people were asking, like, why didn't you release it with Mellow Orange? Uh, did you leave the label or whatever? Uh, Mellow Orange is more of like a collective of artists. It is a label, but it's more of just like a collective of friends and artists and stuff like that. And uh, I kind of wanted to just release it with somebody else this time. It, you know, it, it, there was nothing like, there was no um, no beef or anything with me and Yusai or any of the other members of Mellow Orange. I think everybody's just kind of doing their own thing in general. Uh, we, we definitely didn't want to pigeonhole anybody to Mellow Orange. Um, Mellow Orange is actually not my label. It's Yusai's label. So people, uh, I think, just associate associate me with mellow orange they think i'm like the owner or something when i'm in reality i'm not i'm just a another slave <laughs> another pawn to their evil scheme but um uh yeah i released it with jakarta they were really receptive of uh picking up the the, the album which was cool and uh yeah so uh yeah i don't know i might go with I was thinking about maybe if I do release a, no, a new album, I would just do it all me. Um, but you know, these are things I can I can figure out later on. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to bore everybody too much. It's kind of weird talking in front of a camera as opposed to like no camera and then just a microphone. It's so much easier. Um, and yeah. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into this this YouTube video as well as the Fredcast, since the audio will be on up on Spotify or uh, on my, um, on the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts, audio podcasts, it'll be up on there. And then this video will be up on YouTube. And I'll just keep everybody posted of what's going on. You can follow me on social media, Instagram, mainly Instagram, because I'm hardly on Facebook, honestly. And I only tweet, use Twitter to kind of post news and just random, funny, weird thoughts. So I don't know how serious my Twitter channel is. Um, and then, you know, I'll just hopefully I'll just have more time to post stuff like these YouTube videos as well as Instagram live stuff or something like that. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Thank you for, for all the support and tuning in. All right, guys. Peace.